Good morning, world. I hope that uh, the sound's coming through and I'm looking forward to our time together. And if some of you are on now, a special welcome to you. If you can let me know if the sound is happening, that'd be great. Thank you for letting me know about the sound. And hello, Megan and Deborah and Kathy and EJ Mom, Mary Kate, LH from Iran. Welcome back. Delighted to have someone from Iran. And Miria and Leslie, Beth, Barbara Gates. I'm delighted to see your name up here and that we're sitting together. Imagine, I almost feel like I'm join, I've joined your morning sitting group. And, uh, uh, Nuala and Gail. Hi, Gail. Nice to see your name and have you here and Lynn Jones. This is a, such a treat for me to sit here and see your names and and uh, know that we're going to be together and thank you. So good morning everyone and welcome to our morning sitting. And as an introduction to this sitting, I want to mention that I read a recent study that uh, of doing a clinical, clin about a clinic, clinical studies done for depression and uh, this particular study from Stanford University uh, has come to the conclusion that uh, the most successful means, uh, much more than anything before, for overcoming depression is uh, quieting a person's thoughts, quieting the thinking. And um, maybe slowing it down, making it quieter, so that our, maybe, maybe, didn't, the study didn't say this, but from, you know, from our experience of meditation, to not allow our thinking to drive the show, not to have our thinking lead us around or be in charge of it, and we're just kind of following along, pulled along in the streams and currents and boats of thinking. And so as you, uh, as you get ready here to meditate, maybe closing your eyes, see if you can notice yourself thinking. Noticing how much energy there is in your thinking Noticing what parts of your body seemed activated by your thinking. Would you say that your thinking is fast or slow? A 
energetic or calm. And for a few moments, allow yourself to keep thinking. And <clears throat> try, see if you can quiet your thinking. Go, keep going, keep going with your thinking. And maybe if you're thinking in words, you can have your words be spoken in your mind more quietly in a gentle way, not a forced quiet. Or if you think more in images, maybe if there are is movement in your images or you move between images, maybe you can slow the film down a little bit or make it more spacious. And then using your thinking to think about meditation to very gently think about your body and your posture, maybe giving yourself instructions to sit up, take a posture that's supportive, instructions to make yourself adjust a little bit. giving yourself your own beginning meditation instructions very quietly, gently. And then perhaps having thoughts, maybe instructions for connecting with your breathing. Perhaps you tell yourself softly, lovingly, to take a few long, slow, deep breaths. Perhaps you quietly tell yourself to Allow there to be a natural breathing. Normal breathing. Perhaps in beginning this session, there's ways that you can kindly, gently have your thinking encourage you to explore your body a bit, to see if there's any places you can relax your body. And then telling yourself quietly, softly, thoughts about now tuning into your breathing. Maybe you think it's very slowly, 
patiently. And perhaps your thinking can be slow enough and quiet enough that it's just a single word that helps you stay with your breathing. Maybe you say the word thought in, breathing in or out as you breathe out. Rising as the chest rises, falling as it falls. To use your thinking very quietly, softly, to help you stay connected to your breathing. Allowing the rhythm of breathing to massage your thinking thinking mind. The rhythm of the body breathing in and out, expansion and contraction. a massage for your body. With a very kind of quiet background thinking that encourages your awareness to sustain itself with your breathing. A very quiet intentionality to hang in there for the full inhale and the full exhale
if you find yourself having thoughts that are self-critical or discouraging, don't worry about it, but very gently, in a truthful way if you can, say something positive about yourself, about your meditation or little words of encouragement like, it's okay. You can do it. Just gently carry on with your breathing. Perhaps you can slow your thinking down so that you can better feel the body breathing.
And if you quiet your thinking enough, let it just keep quieting on its own. And if there are pauses between your thoughts, allow those pauses be, to be times to better feel and sense the breathing. Or if there is a lot of stillness and silence around your thinking, let the thinking recede in the background and let the breathing fill the stillness, the silence. And then in the last minutes of this sitting, 
what would your experience be? What would be your experience of breathing, being in a body, being here? If you use no thoughts to tell you, to answer the question, Without thoughts, what is your experience now? And then finally, for the last few seconds of this sitting, turn your thoughts and actively do think now. Thinking thoughts of goodwill, of care for the world around you, for the people around you. In your way, in the way that comes out of you, Have caring thoughts, compassionate thoughts, kind thoughts for people known and unknown, people near you and far away. May it be that the influence of your goodwill travels far and wide.
So again, good morning. And today I'll continue on the theme of samadhi, the fourth of the five faculties. And I have a lot of reverence for samadhi. Somehow uh, this samadhi represents a wonderful state of being, of wholeness, of subtleness, of well-being that um, somehow makes me feel whole in this world or, or settled or peaceful beyond or wider than anything I could think. And that samadhi at its very best is um, kind of like entering into sacred ground. So maybe it's a little dangerous to treat samadhi in such a lofty way, but I do have that kind of feeling for it. And um, the um, <clears throat> so yesterday I talked about uh, two aspects of concentration, samadhi, both that are preparations for developing concentration and it's also part and parcel of concentration. But thinking of it as a preparation is to um, be to arrive, to initiate the process of concentration, is to um, uh, relax, let go, and let go into being centered, to find a center within you. And the idea is to compose yourself on that center, to be settled. And this is an alternative way of talking about being focused. Um, uh, many times concentration is associated with focus and so to bring a focus of the mind on the breathing, for example, or whatever you're concentrating on. And that's fine, but it tends, it lean, lends itself to kind of being in the control tower of the head and kind of with the mind's eye looking in like a laser beam or something. And um, the in, in the Buddha's teaching, samadhi and and samadhi and is a is a state is an initially is a all fully embodied state it's our whole body is suffused with the qualities of concentration it's not only a mental act so to talk about composing ourselves uh, to me is a that language is a, f- a physical language do we compose our whole body we settle our body we we align our body and settle and, uh, and in that aligning and settling, uh, we begin the process of concentration. And it works particularly well, I think, if we compose ourselves on the breathing or compose ourselves on some center of gravity within. Um, so it is a kind of reorienting ourselves, maybe from how we usually are thinking and doing or being in the world, to something maybe that for some people is maybe a ca- counterintuitive or even foreign, the idea that we would be settled and composed with our body here and now, and not kind of thinking about things and wanting things and avoiding things with our mind. And um, so to um, the, um, the, um, so with a kind of relaxing, letting go, centering ourselves on the breathing. Then uh, when, we, when we kind of have that initial beginning, then there are two movements of uh, concentration practice that are kind of initiating and engaging parts of concentration practice that can go hand in hand with mindfulness practice. It doesn't have to be separate. And in the ancient language, it's called vitaka and vichara. And in my, you know, the way my brain makes kind of plays with words and sounds, that vitaka to me uh, sounds like a knock, tuck, tuck, knock, knock. And uh, it's the initial kind of showing up and connecting, knock, knock, I'm here, 
open the door or here and I'm going to be, you know, I'm letting you know that I'm here. And, um, and the, um, uh, and chara, the sound of it to me, chara, I like to kind of stretch the A, is more like lingering or staying or coursing or surfing on something. There's continuity there. Um, so there's a, so the vitaka is that sometimes it's called the initial application of mind, of attention. It's, it's uh, bringing the attention to the focus. So if we're focusing on the breathing, if that's the center of gravity for meditation, and the mind wanders off and goes someplace else, then uh, the very act of bringing the mind back and c- reconnecting to the breathing, knocking on the breath, here I am. Um, and that initial kind of, just a, you know, the, con- the initial connection is just a momentary thing, just here I am. And, um, and it does involve a little bit of rudimentary thinking. In fact, the word vitaka uh, can in Pali also mean thinking. Uh, if you notice your mind is wander off, there is some kind of cognitive working of the mind that says, okay, let's come back, let's reconnect to the breathing. And how we have those thoughts and how we do that coming back to the breathing uh, is actually very important. It, it's maybe more important than actually returning to the breath. Because we want to make the return be something that's welcomed and enjoyable and calming in and of itself. I know that sometimes I've jerked my mind back, uh, and which kind of, kind of violently, I could be feeling bad, or oh, there I am again drifting off and jerk it back. And that's more agitating. I've also sometimes pounced back on the breath, kind of, okay, now I'm going to really going to bore into it. And that also is actually more agitating than calming. So how can we come back in a calm way and reconnect to the experience of breathing? Um, it's a little bit in, uh, maybe instructive that as far as I know in the ancient language of the Buddha, in the teachings, there is no equivalent idea that we use in English of coming back to your breathing, returning to your breathing. And uh, it is maybe you know a little bit of a, it's a metaphor uh, to bring the mind back the mind doesn't go anywhere. The mind's always here. Um, and to the, the metaphor of bringing it back maybe lends itself to a certain kind of agitation or movement, moving the mind or feeling that movement. Maybe vitaka is uh, noticing that we're drifting off and then having this thought of where's the breathing? And then allowing the breathing to knock on you. Here I am. Knock, knock. So there's no movement, it's more of a relaxing and opening and making that initial connection. So that's a conscious, somewhat intentional movement. Okay, I'm back, here I am. Then um, once we're there, some people are very good at this coming back or connecting and to the breathing or to the focus of meditation. And uh, once they're there, they kind of don't apply themselves so much anymore. And so then the mind wanders off again. The second aspect of concentration is vichara, which is sustaining the attention on the breathing, or sustaining it on the object of attention. Lingering, hanging out there. The analogy that's used, in the, one of them in the ancient texts, is um, vitaka is placing a cloth on a bron- uh, uh, bronze bowl, and vichara is rubbing it, cleaning it, polishing it. Or and maybe a, even a kind of more poetic image that's used is a, um, a bee f- uh, landing on a flower, and then vi- that's vitaka, and vichara is the bee walking around, um, picking up the pollen or something, you know, exploring and be, you know, wandering around on the flower on the f- on the flower. The word vichara uh, comes from the word chara to walk, to wander. And so this idea that we're wandering, we're staying with, we're feeling. And some uh, translators, some meditation teachers, translates vichara as evaluating. Uh, kind of a little bit kind of being there and kind of discovering the experience. Uh, getting to know it better, feeling it, letting it register more fully. So vitaka is uh, connecting to the breath or allowing the breathing to connect to you and your awareness. And then vichara is sustaining that attention over time, 
lingering there, resting in that, uh, letting go into the whole experience of exhale. So you're really there, bicharaing, uh, uh, cruising on, resting in, uh, polishing, being polished by the exhale, the whole length of the exhale stays in awareness. And then the same for the inhale. To connect to the inhale, the whole inhale. And this vitaka and vichara are relevant to some degree at the beginning of each breath, each inhale and each exhale. There's a connection and then there's a resting, sustaining in it. Now this idea of connecting and then sustaining through time, just uh, it's all, and sustaining will always uh, stop, will always come to an end. And so it's always going to be a time to do it again and again. Sometimes the sustaining can be a long time, um, really long, you're just there and it's hard, you know, your mind's not going to wander off. But more often, especially near the beginning, it wanders off quickly and the sustaining doesn't have much momentum. The analogy I, I like for this uh, vitaka and vichara is uh, a push scooter. You have one foot on the top of the scooter and the other foot is pushing the ground and pushing you along. And if you give yourself a good push, then the momentum will carry you for a while and you don't have to push for a while. But the momentum eventually, uh, unless you're going down a steep hill, the momentum kind of fades away, uh, disappears, and then you have to push again. And, and then you glide along. And, you know, when I was a kid and did a scooter, I never complained about having to push again to get the momentum going, get the momentum going. So sometimes as we start developing concentration in practice, um, these two movements of the little uh, pushing, the tuck, the bitaka, uh, a little tap, and then, um, and then gliding along, allowing ourselves to be glided along, allowing ourselves to be carried uh, along as we go. And, uh, and then when we need to do the other kind of connection again, little push again, here we go, push again, and then ride it, ride it, ride it. As, as uh, the practice deepens and these two intentions, it's intentional to connect or allow the breath to connect to us. It's intentional to linger and ride it or to let it wash over us, the whole experience. As you do that um, and you kind of settle into the practice more and more, at some point, this uh, need for vitaka and vichara, connecting and sustaining, uh, falls away, and we're just really right there, and, and no, you know, we're just there and just cruising along, and we're not, no intentionality, no thought is needed to keep going that way. And um, so, the, finally, what I'd like to say is these two things that I've talking about today: the initial connection and the sustaining of the connection of awareness. Uh, if you want to experiment with it, um, see, see if you can find a way to do it that's calm, relaxed, spacious, without expectation or demand that it be in any, any kind of way. See if you can actually make it kind of fun or nice or enjoyable. So you actually, you like doing it. You want to come and do it. It's not, it doesn't feel like work. Just like for a kid, pushing a scooter is not work. So... Thank you very much for being here and I'll continue the theme of Samadhi uh, tomorrow and, and take it to the next level maybe. And, um, and I've said it many times now, but I feel um, very appreciative and, and a lot of gratitude for being able to do this together with all of you. So thank you. <laughs>